What's going on guys? Roy Robles here from ZigWheels.bh and I want to talk about this burgeoning crossover scene that's happening in the market. I mean every brand has got their own fighter, their own contender, but I think Volkswagen Philippines has got something up their sleeves that I think you should consider. And consider you must with the 2021 Volkswagen T-Cross. The brand is banking on their global prestige and name recognition by bringing in one of their global best sellers in the market. This is the S-Trim, considered the entry-level variant for the T-Cross and unlike other compact crossover SUVs, this particular car relies on providing excellence in the very basics. Let's start with that front end. Taking what could be a Volkswagen signature no-nonsense approach to car design, it features a sort of aggressive looking grille flanked by huge squarish headlamps. The lower part of the grille gets a fancy metallic skid plate and on this S trim omits the fog lamps and DRLs. Now you won't be finding any LEDs here. If you're looking for LEDs on the headlamps, you're gonna have to move on to the SE trim, which is a more expensive, of course, a top of the line variant of the T-Cross. Heading over to the side profile of the Volkswagen T-Cross, it's got some interesting character profiles that I think give it a more standout look, especially when compared to the competition. Compact crossover SUVs aren't exactly supermodels or concept cars to showcase a brand's design capabilities, but the 2021 Volkswagen T-Cross features a cohesive design language that the German car company is definitely known for. Slicing right through the belt line is a straight character line that ties together the front headlamps and rear tail lamps, terminating all the way to this nice chrome design feature wrapping around the rear part of the body. Nice roof rails for your luggage are present and you have your mandatory black plastic cladding that hovers above these 16 inch tires which I believe could be bigger but for someone driving in 15s on his daily these are nice and chunky. Here's something that's definitely different. I mean look at this black bar running across the rear end. You've got these interesting looking tail lamp cluster here. This definitely doesn't light up. I wish it would. Overall it gives it a complete design which I think I, can, I think it looks nice but it can be better. The star of the show is definitely that black bar in the rear with the imposing VW badge in the back. What gives the rear hatch extra character is the location of the T-Cross badge right smack in the middle. Even though this is an entry level car, the chinchilla gray color blocking scheme is a real head turner which is even more accentuated by an integrated blacked out spoiler and it even has metallic looking rear diffuser for even more SUV toughness. It really is as basic as it can be on the outside, especially for this S trim. But if you want LEDs with DRLs, fog lamps, 17 inch mags, and a glorious panoramic sunroof, you'll have to spring for the SE trim. Opening the hatch, it has deep space for all your luggage. With the seats up, you get 329 liters of cargo space, and thanks to the magic of 6040 folding seats, that space expands to 1319 liters to inhale all groceries or other stuff during their pandemic supply runs. So the interior's got a lot of going on for it, but again, this is the entry level variant, so you won't be seeing a lot of the uh, fancy new colors inside this Volkswagen T-Cross. Got a lot of scratchy hard plastic materials up here, an 18 inch touchscreen that has Apple CarPlay, but weirdly enough, no Android Auto. You also have a manual air conditioning here, a polyurethane steering wheel, which does have, interestingly enough, cruise control, you've got your media control centers here. It's a flat bottom steering wheel, so you definitely find that exciting or interesting. The seat pattern here kind of mimics the, those 90s seats, but again, this is Volkswagen. It's Volkswagen quirky and I love it. Now the dash is definitely nicely molded and again, it's hard plastic. The most interesting part has got to be the shifter column. When I first got this car, I had to look at the shifter column right here. I thought I was gonna drive a manual, but unfortunately it's just an automatic. Uh, I got my hopes up too soon. Uh, but it does have this interesting leather boot here that mimics a manual transmission. So, all right. <laughs> it's got a lot of blank buttons. You have this button right here to turn off the automatic shutdown button for the engine. It's more of a fuel saving feature that we have on the Volkswagen T-Cross that I'll show you guys later on. Again, it's full plastic everywhere. The seats are nice though. The seats are, and not, the headrests aren't adjustable at all. But uh, hey, it's a nice place to be in. No worries, let's check out the back. All right, so in the rear, oh wow. There's one thing about the Volkswagen T-Cross, it has one of the roomiest 
leg room, a roomiest interiors I've ever seen in any compact crossover. The thing about the local variant of the Volkswagen T-Cross is that this is more like the long wheelbase version for the international market. So it definitely shows inside tons of leg room, tons of knee room and that headroom. Oh, forget about it. It's a nice place to be in and uh, yeah. You don't have any air con vents in the rear, but you do have a USB port, both a USB-A and a USB-C. Oh guys, welcome to the future. This car also has a USB-C charging port. So yeah, definitely nice to be here. By the way, it's got four speakers, four speakers for everyone to enjoy all your tunes. It's nicely tuned, by the way. So even if you play those large hard rock music or even bassy hip hop, it's no problem. Okay, I'm definitely gonna starting to see the value of this Volkswagen T-Cross. Safety features for the entry-level S trim include dual airbags, three-point seat belts for all passengers with ISOFIX anchors, stability control, hill hold assist, rear parking sensors, anti-lock brakes and immobilizers, emergency data recorder, and a tire pressure monitoring system. The top end variant gets backup cameras, four more airbags, and autonomous braking. Now let's talk about the T-Cross's driving dynamics. Under the hood, you'd find a 1.5 liter naturally aspirated gasoline engine that makes 111 horsepower and 145 Nm of torque. Now, those numbers may sound paltry on paper, and uh, well, they're not gonna be a speed demon at all in this one, but they, they're definitely enough. If you're driving around the city usually, and if you're taking just uh, occasional jaunts on, along the highway, those numbers are definitely enough to haul you and your family and your stuff, or you won't be towing any cars, will you? But again, if I floor the pedal right here, power is there and it's enough. And I get up to speed as soon as I move forward. Zero to 100 gets about 13.3 seconds and top speed is around 185 kilometers per hour. The most important part about having a, that kind of engine without having any turbochargers or superchargers or even a hybrid engine to accommodate that 1.5 liter naturally aspirated engine is that yeah you got you, you get great fuel economy fuel economy in the city is around 10 kilometers per liter and once you get to the highway oh once you open up the highway oh my goodness you get around 15 kilometers per liter on this bad boy and hey that's sometimes that's everything that you want in a subcompact crossover SUV such as the Volkswagen T-Cross now, suspension characteristics. Well, in front, you get your usual McPherson struts, which are independent suspension. And in the rear, you get a torsion bar rear suspension, which is supposedly semi-independent. Now, a lot of people have been complaining about giving a compact crossover, a torsion bar rear suspension would give it a sharp, jarring ride for both you and the passengers. But even though we're going through some ruts right here, I can barely feel it. The way the Volkswagen has been constructed here, and uh, it's, it's definitely a solid ride, and it's pretty smooth. I mean, I've been reviewing a couple of compact crossovers lately. Not, not actually comes close to the level of refinement, level of smooth drive this Volkswagen actually offers. You gotta remember that this still is a European SUV, so if you wanna go all Euro and all that, this is a good choice. Pricing for the 180 MPI ATS variant starts at 1,098,000 pesos. All the bells and whistles for the SE trim will cost you a hundred grand more at 1,198,000 pesos. The S trim gets this sleek chinchilla gray collar blocking as well as polar white, but stepping up to the SE opens up a world of customization mixing and matching colors on the inside to match the exterior color from romance red Tribu, and something that reminds me of the MCU's Big Daddy Thanos, Syringia Violet. So when it comes to compact crossover SUVs, the Volkswagen T-Cross definitely ticks a lot of our boxes. What do you think? Does the Volkswagen T-Cross have what it takes to stand out in a crowded compact crossover SUV market? Leave us a comment in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. And again, if you love this video, leave us a like and subscribe to our channel and make sure that you smash that notification icon so that you're alerted whenever we upload a new video. It's this is Roy Robles from ZigWheels.ph and I'll see you guys next time.